I am Dot Guthrie, and this is Franklin Boulevard Media. I am going to tell you about my life's journey. I was born on January 18, 1947, in a little house, a little country house, by the side of the road in Clover, South Carolina. And I was educated in the Clover School Districts. Then it was Roosevelt High School. And, well, before it was a high school, it was really a plank or a wooden school where we had to build the fires in the mornings. And we would take paper and roll it together and uh, start the fire and then lay the wood on, warm up the old stove and put our brown bag peanut butter biscuits in a little closet and leave them there until it was time to eat. Then we would pay three cents to get a carton of chocolate milk. And for me, that was a real treat because at home, we couldn't afford such luxury or such wonderful items. So at school, I could buy the milk for three cents and we would save our brown paper bags so that we could bring our peanut butter uh, biscuits back to school the very next day. And I learned to read. I love reading and I learned to read from a primer entitled Dick, Jane, Sally, Spot, Tim, and Puff. Those were the words that taught me how important it is to be able to identify words, to understand what they mean, the sentences mean, etc. Now, during that time, there were no books of color. So I accepted whatever was placed into my hands or on the desk. Oftentimes, we meaning the African-American school or the colored school in Clover, South Carolina, would receive the hand-me-down books from the white elementary schools. Oftentimes, I could start a great story. I would want to enjoy the ending of that story, and because of torn pages or bubble gum or whatever, I was unable to do that. So I learned how to be creative. I would create my own ending to a story if I couldn't find it in the books. So I went to Jerusalem Baptist Church in Clover, and I uh, became a member there. I sang uh, in the choir, and I just loved the little song that I was asked to lead. It was called, He Said, He Said, If I Would Live Right, that he would make my enemies leave me alone. And I am telling you, that was one of the little songs that I learned to adore. And also, I wanted to go to, away to college, but you know, my dad was a sharecropper. We could hardly afford to buy food. And there were times when I couldn't go to school because I, being the oldest, had to stay home to take care of my siblings. But you know what? That didn't stop me. That did not deter me from trying to reach my goal or goals in life. So whether it was picking cotton and having the uh, cotton uh, bulbs uh, sting your hands or looking at the bull weavers or whatever I saw there in the fields while pulling that cotton sack, I still could dream. And that's why dreams are so important. And that's why it is so very important to help our children nowadays to achieve or to attain their dreams. So from the cotton fields of clover to the African American Museum, I can tell you that my story was one that I learned how to appreciate life and the values in life. And it doesn't matter where you come from, it's where you're going with what you've learned from your experiences. I went to South Carolina State University in Orangeburg, South Carolina, and I didn't, my dad couldn't drive me to the college in Orangeburg, we didn't have a car, but we had some good Samaritans, our neighbors. We packed up my two little suitcases, 
I hardly had much to put in them. And my neighbor drove us to Orangeburg, South Carolina. And that's where I first learned so much about African-American history and the contributions and achievements that they made in America. When I uh, arrived there on the college and my advisor was associate professor in the School of Library Science, and uh, they were talking to us about various uh, careers. And um, at one time I did think that I wanted to be a business major, but when my uh, advisor finished with me talking about libraries and books, and uh, I discovered from having to take children's literature that there were African Americans in books like Great Negroes Past and Present, written by Russell Adams, or Negroes who helped build America. I just knew that it was going to be my charge and there's an old hymn called, A Charge to Keep I Have. I just knew that it was going to be my charge to share what I didn't get with other young people, African-American literature. Right after graduation, I actually worked at, uh, well, I, I had to stop between uh, graduation. I actually graduated from Winthrop University in uh, Rock Hill, South Carolina. Again, my family was poor and we could not afford uh, for me to uh, finish at South Carolina State University. So then the state would issue a certificate which would allow uh, those with college uh, courses and education to work in uh, schools. So I got a certificate to become librarian at Jefferson High School in York, South Carolina. And that's how I started my career. While I was there at Jefferson, of course, I uh, had the idea that I wanted to finish uh, my education and pursue a, a, my a master's in educational media, which uh, focuses uh, focused on library science. So after getting married, I went back to Winthrop. I commuted to Winthrop and I got the undergraduate degree as well as a master's degree. While I was working as a librarian at Jefferson, South Carolina, one Tuesday evening, the teachers always would get, gather and the young teachers would play cards. So we were playing cards one night uh, at one of the clubs in uh, York and my friend Vernon Barnett from Gastonia brought down one of his friends uh, named Bobby Guthrie, who was in the school district here in Gastonia. So Bobby and I uh, met then and uh, we became friends. And after about a year, I married Bobby and moved to Gastonia and I became the reference librarian at the public library, the Gaston County. It was Gaston County Regional Library at the time. So I became a reference librarian there. I worked there until there was a job opening at East Gaston High School where I became the a high school librarian at East Gaston High School in Mount Holly, North Carolina. And once I left East Gaston High School, I came to uh, Lingerfeld Elementary School here in Gastonia, and from Lingerfeld Elementary School, uh, I decided that I wanted to work with Charlotte Mecklenburg School. So I went to Charlotte Mecklenburg to work as a librarian, and while I was there, I opened a new school library there uh, from start to finish, uh, Wanden Springs Elementary School. I became the uh, National Teacher of the Year, Tom Warner National Teacher of the Year, the North Carolina Technology uh, Educator of the Year. And then um, the opportunity presented itself for me to return to Gaston County to become the director over the school library media program where I would supervise all school libraries. So it's safe to say you got a whole lot of kids in Gaston County. Yes, because I was a storyteller at the public library for many years, and now those parents have children in the school district, and 
Although I don't have any grandchildren, I claim that I have Gaston County's grandchildren. <laughs> Representation on the board. I knew that uh, we had had one uh, or several African Americans on uh, the Board of Education, but when I decided and made the decision to run, there were none. And I know that uh, although, you know, as a school board, we always want to make an effort to do what's best for all children, but I just felt that there should be a voice there to speak on behalf or our African-American community because there w were and still are so many challenges uh, that we need to uh, face as well as try to find uh, solutions to and for. And I felt that my voice along with my experience because I had been in the public library arena and of course I'd been in the schools and you know when you have very little money or you get very little money from school districts, you have priorities that you must uh, fill. And I didn't think that school libraries had books to represent our children of color. Now we can't blame that all on the school libraries. We also look at the publishers and the vendors because those books were not being produced. But it was my belief that if I had a position on the board, I could advocate for those types of books to be placed in our library so that no child like I did would ever be denied the opportunity to find books that would provide the bibliotherapy that many of our children need. Well, I'm in my 10th year right now. I serve as the chair of the curriculum and instruction committee on the Board of Education. And that gives me firsthand information and it gives me that voice that I want to have in helping to support the programs, the initiatives that are planned for children who may need special care and special programs in order to feel successful. And you know now, more than ever before, we need to look at social and emotional learning. That is so critical. How children feel about themselves, how other folk feel because of their behavior about them, and what are some of the strategies that we all need to put in place in order for our children to feel holistically successful. So along with social emotional learning we must think about wholehearted learning that's taking care of the whole body of the whole individual mentally social and emotionally so um i love black history of course because i fell in love with black history from those two books that i talked about earlier and um, i always i'm one of the associate ministers at tabernacle baptist church and I always planned the black history programs. So uh, I have this really good friend, Eula Hoyle. She is, uh, uh, she works with uh, Gaston County Schools over at Webb Street. And she is a black history buff uh, lover as well. And uh, we talked and I said to her, Eula, wouldn't it be nice if we could just for, uh, as part of our Black History Celebration, set up a little mini a museum in the Family Life Center here at Tabernacle. And she thought, yes. So we did that. We brought a variety of resources. So we brought uh, posters, we brought books, we brought the most prestigious African American award given to children's books and illustrators the Coretta Scott King Book Awards. We brought all of those things. We focused on sports, every genre, really. And we even had a circle there for young men uh, to serve as uh, former President Obama. So we did it all. And we had that, uh, uh, we opened the little mini museum at uh, 10 o'clock that Saturday morning. And I'm telling you, from 10 o'clock to 2, and we had the links there, they were giving out free books, giving away free, free books. And we saw over 400 people. Now you tell me that there wasn't or isn't a need for an African American museum. So we decided after that, 
something must be done. We've got to do more than just have the little mini museum because it was only there for two days. So we have this wonderful person in our church, Anthony uh, Powell. At the time, he was on the Lori Mill uh, board. And I asked him if he thought that Lori Mill, now listen to this, Lori Mill would allow us for two weeks to set up a little museum. Now, if we were going to bring all of those things in for two weeks and then disperse, put them somewhere, that didn't make sense. So I thought, well, if you'll never know unless you ask. So I asked Mr. Powell to ask the CEO, Joe, if uh, they would consider leasing space at the museum, I mean, at Lori Mill for a museum. So he said, I'll get back with you. And he did. And of course, I went in to speak with Joe Linehan, who is the CEO, and Bob Clay, oh, at Caldwell Bankers. They told me that I could lease the space, but I had to for three years. And I had to pay $1,400 a month. But you know, if you believe in something, and if you feel so strongly about it, and that's what we must always instill in our children, you follow, or you stay in pursuit of that dream. So I made the commitment, not knowing, but I do know scripture says, Faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not yet seen. So, about a month ago, I signed another three-year lease. So we are very happy to report we've been there and from February 16th, 2019, until we closed due to COVID March 16, 2020, we had seen over 4,000 people, North and South Carolina. Faith groups came. Reverend Claude Alexander's church came from Charlotte last Feb um, the February before we closed to do their black history announcements from the museum. Just as we slowly return this year, Reverend Freeman from Mount Zion did a Bible study there. We are open to the community and we have faithful supporters, faithful faith-based supporters. We have partnered with Belmont Abbey College, with Dr. Stratton. Students in education must come through the museum. We are a very strong in partnership with Gaston County Schools. Clover School District came yesterday. They brought students from Clover School District yesterday, and tomorrow I will see grades 9 through 12 from Charlotte Mecklenburg Schools. I want to say that the African American Museum is not my museum. It's Gaston County's museum. I want the best for Gaston County, and we want the best for our children. We want to prepare them for life skills. And when I say life skills, not every child will go or want to go to a four-year college. So I want to be around so that I can help and that I can advocate for those children that just want to find great jobs which will, which will allow them to develop their own interest in things that will move them forward as well as their family. So as far as I'm concerned, I'm gonna hang around a long time so that we will be able to provide the voice as well as 
whatever services that we can offer to empower our children and their families. And just so Gaston County can get a taste, you know, they're always talking about food tasting, a taste of this, a taste of that. Well, I want to be able to give Gaston County a taste of literacy. Our museum would like to do that. And we are going to do that on June 30th of this a year because we're going to have a storytelling, the arts, and STEM festival right there on the campus at Loray Mill. And we're going to have vendors, we're going to have authors, we're going to have uh, artists, we're having musicians, we're having um, the, we're partnering with the city police, Gastonia City Police, and the Point Church in Belmont. They're bringing popcorn stations. We're going to have two food trucks, and they are sponsored by one by the Gaston County Schools, the other one by Delta Sigma Theta. The Omegas are going to do things. Uh, we're, the Alphas are going to have play uh, activities for the children. We are going to have uh, seven ice cream churns there. The children will see STEM at its very best, from a liquid to a solid. Ice cream churns will be going, and we'll have just all, and a pop, uh, hot dog cart will be there. Anthony Gallant will be have his uh, information there. Uh, Solid Hands will be there. Any group or agency that would like to set up a table will be more than welcome to do that. That's how we empower our citizens in Gaston County. The public libraries from Lincoln County as well as Gaston will be there signing children up for the summer reading program. Hey, and we're doing old school. The old groups that performed many, many years ago. Well, Reverend Kenneth Falls is gonna pull a few of them together and we're going to end our day with some old school music because June is Black Music Month. In Gaston County, you know the old African proverb, it takes a village to raise a child? Well, we want you to know that if you are a resident of Gaston County, you are a part of the village. I can't do what you can do. Maybe you can't do what I do. The body is one, but it has many members. The eyes see, the ears hear, the nose smell, the mouth talk. So we are one body, one county, many members. It takes you to help us move Gaston County to excellence. Thank you.